and I think you said you wanted to start with question four. Is that right? Yeah. Four, eight, six, okay. All right. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snip that over into our workspace. And if you ever have a, a if you're ever, if anything is unclear, one of the things that I lose in this format is like sort of those non-verbal cues that maybe you don't understand or something isn't clear, just let me know. Okay. Interrupt me or, or do whatever you need. Um, I'm just gonna work through this. Um, uh, if that's okay with you, I assume that's what you want. Yep. Okay. Right. All right, so we have a line y equals x and we're going from y equals zero, x equals two. Okay, so I'm gonna just make a little graph here. So y equals x looks like this. X equals two looks like that. So you create a little triangular region and you're revolving it around the line y equals three. So it's this line up here. Is that okay so far? Yeah. All right, so the volume and there's two methods here. There's the, the uh, disk and then the washer method. Do you know when to use one or the other? Is that unclear? So basically I have a lot of confusion with the volumes of revolutions of solids. Okay. But, um, yeah, so in general, I okay. might, yeah. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just draw a, a, a washer is, is um, it's completely solid so to speak um, there's no hole in the middle I, I, don't know, I almost prefer like saying this is a, a donut uh, I'm sorry I got these reversed <laughs> this is the washer and this is the the disc um, the washer has sort of the the hole in the middle the donut yeah um, so what what you're looking for is is there is there a gap and there is there is a gap here um, between that line that you're revolving it around mm -hmm. Um, so that's why that's why it is the the washer method here. Um, so there are there are two. Um, let me let me write the the format of the, the integral. Matrix. It's integral, and I, I write it this way: pi r squared minus. And you can there's a lot of ways to write it. You can do pi little r squared. You can combine these two. I don't. I every book is a little bit different how they present this. Um, it can be big r squared minus little r squared. Um, dx and and r big r and little r those are meant to represent the the radius or the distance between uh, the edges of the of, of this of the of the the wash or the donut here so big big r actually let me make a quick adjustment here uh, so there's the center. So little little r is this distance, and then big R is is the the whole thing here. Okay. If you've seen that in class, uh, I'll, uh, I can try and explain it differently if it's still not clear. Um, in this case, big R actually let me use a different color because I think that will be will be helpful here. Big big R is this distance here, mm -hmm. and you can see that it's it's the same. It's the same no matter where you are. Um, in in that uh, in that region, but little r changes. Little r, and I actually like drawing it. I mean, it's it's this, it's this, and then it gets a little bit smaller. And that's that's little. R. It's it's changing. Okay. Okay. Is that is that is that okay? I mean, that that I mean, we're actually write down what it is, but I like I, the visual is really important here that you see the, the distinction between the two. So I see between washers and this, but my confusion also comes in like when shells come in. Say, say that last part one more time. Shells? Oh, oh, that's because it's one curve creating okay, so, the two sides. So, so shell, how washers shell is, is, is something, it's another way to do the same problem. Mm -hmm. So there's actually, it, there's actually, um, I, I, it's almost like a table. There's like, there's like, which method are you gonna use um, and then are you going to go around the x and the y axis, and then you have a method. You know, are you going to use disk, uh, you know, washer, or are you going to use shell method? But disk and washer, really, they're really related. I mean, they're one, mm -hmm. and then the other one are little r zero, so it goes away. Um, 
So I can answer that question about when to use shell or the, the, these methods, but not in this context of this question. Okay. Um, so we're, we're told, we're not told, but I mean, we could use, I mean, we could use another method, but I'm going to use, I'm going to use the, the washer method. So the, the, the big R here is always three, this red line, it doesn't matter where you start. Um, you know, whether you're, you're, you're at the beginning or you're at the end from zero to two, it's, it's always three. So in this case, little r equals, th or big R equals three. The little r is the more confusing one. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it changes it. It's initially, it has a, it has a length of three and then it goes down to a length of one. Like that blue line becomes one and it's three over here. Do you, do you follow that? Yeah. Okay. So this one, it's a little awkward, but the hut, but the blue line to find the blue line, it's, it's at most three and then you subtract out the X value. Okay. And, and I, when I learned this first time, I used to have to just kind of guess and check so I have to actually test. Okay. Well, if X is zero, that means it's three. If X is two, that means it's, it's, it's one because three minus two is one. Okay. That works. Like I had to, I had to go through those mini steps, micro steps to make sure that I actually believed it, but it's, it's basically it's top minus bottom is, is how I'm doing it more officially. So little r is three minus x. Oh, okay. So minus the integral, it's the same, same limits of integration, pi, and then three minus x squared. Okay. And from here, from here, it's just, it's just a function of doing this integration here. Um, you'll definitely want to expand this so we can do that. That's nine minus six x plus x squared. And there's a pi here. The pi just comes out. There's a there's a pi there. So there's um, I, I would prefer to combine these unless you unless you object to doing that. No, that's how I do it. Okay. So the this is gonna be nine pi minus nine pi uh, plus six pi x minus x squared pi. And so those go away. So you're gonna end up integrating from zero to two. 6 pi x minus pi x squared dx. And from here, you get 3 pi x squared minus pi over 3 x cubed evaluated from 0 to 2. You should by now recognize that when you evaluate at the lower limit, I know you probably have to show your work for this, but when you evaluate at 0, these just go to 0. So you just have to do it at the upper limit. Mm -hmm. 3 pi times 2 squared minus pi over 3 times two cubed. So this is 12 pi minus eight pi over three. This 12 pi is really 36 pi over three. So this reduces to 28 pi over three for the volume. Okay. All right. Um, I'm ready to move on to the next question. Um, but unless you wanna have more discussion on this. Uh, this works for me. Okay. You said 8C is the next one? Yep. All right. Yeah. 8C likely requires doing some of the previous ones. We'll see. <laughs> uh, okay. Maybe not. All right, a uh, curve is given parametrically by the equation x equals 3t minus t cubed and y equals 3t. Did you already do part A? Yes. Did you do part B? Yes. Okay. Um, I have to do them again to do part C unless we want to go off of your work. Hmm. I think, let's see, because I know that I got points off on part A, but I think it's just because I did it a little bit wrong, but I got X equals Y plus Y cubed over 27. Like this that I've written off to the right? Yes. Okay. Um, I don't, I think that it might be wrong. But. 
Uh, no, I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I mean, the, the, this, this right here, you would solve for T, T equals Y over three, and then you would substitute it back into this mm -hmm. three times Y over three minus Y over three cubed, which is how you came up with, with what you have over here on the right. So this is X equals Y minus Y cubed over 27. So that's good. You said you lost points? Sure. Um, on that? It's because when I did it the first time, I used 3 over y instead of y over 3. Oh, okay. So I lost yeah. points. But All then right. I redid it in the correct one. Okay. Um, so B, this is part, this is A. Um, B is easier to do in this parametric notation because it, it, there's some things kind of in the background, but you can, you can find dy dt over dx dt and it resolves to dy dx. So you're essentially finding the derivative of both um, with respect to t. So d, dy dt is 3. And dx dt is 3 minus 3t three squared. Yep. You can do it from here. It's just more work. Um, so that's probably why it's here. The instructor's testing. Do you really understand what's going on? Find the value values of t, which the tangent line to the parametric curve is horizontal, and values of tangent, okay. So this is the slope. I mean, if you recall, like the, 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 the definition of the derivative is the slope. Like this is the the slope mm -hmm. function, if, if yeah. for lack of like better that, like that's what it is. And you have a slope equal to zero for a rational function, which is what this is, when the numerator is equal to zero, like you, you would, you would set three equal to zero, except it's this isn't this is not possible. So there's there's no there's no situation where the slope is zero, and that, and that's what it's that's that's the interpretation of this. Mm -hmm. Horizontal means dy dx equals zero. So our teacher says that you also have, or I guess that's critical numbers though. So. I guess that doesn't count. So it's not possible, which I think is what I put, I put does not exist. Is that different? Um, there, there is no value where this is true. Yeah. This is, I mean, I, this is one of those where your instructor has a way that they want it presented and you have to give it to them. If I were your instructor and as long, I'm looking for words like it doesn't exist, because I, I see that you, you've somehow stated that the numerator is never equal to zero. Like that's what I'm looking for, or these mm -hmm. words, but your instructor is looking for their own, their, their own set of words that they want you to use. So I can't really speak to that other than to say, give, give um, it, like you don't need more words, you just need the right words okay. that they're looking for. Um, so the slope is undefined. These are, you know, this is, this is the horizontal, this is the vertical. And that's where the denominator equals zero. So you set this equal to zero. Uh, a lot of ways to do this. I would I would factor three, one minus t squared, and then this is difference of squares, so it's one minus t, one plus t. You can definitely move it over to the other side and divide the square root to get the same thing. You get t equals plus or minus one here. Okay. So the question I have to look back here, did it actually ask, it just asked for the values of T. Mm -hmm. It could have asked, like it did, like, I don't think it, this is more advancing, but it could, it could ask for the ordered pair. And then you would and just plug it. You'd put, yeah, you put T in and then you get an X value and a Y value based on that. Okay. So that makes sense. I don't know why I got that wrong. Where are you taking uh, this class? Uh, basis. Okay. Um, they're they're pretty good with their uh, um, uh, they're they're pretty good with their curriculum. There, so you'd be really well prepared for uh, for um, uh, the uh, AP test. Yeah. Um, these are good questions to look at. Yeah. All right. Um, mm -hmm. So that, I mean, you said, you said four and eight C, we've covered both of those. We obviously have extra time. Um, you said, and you also said cover volumes of solids and revolution. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is uh, that where you'd like me to continue using the time? 
Yes, please. Okay. And then if we, if after that we still have time because, yeah, I have another, some other problems that I could send you. I don't know if that's too I, I would, I would recommend, I mean, this is, this is totally your time. Um, I would recommend sending me anything that you want, want uh, help with, you know, me giving you general information on, on Revolution of Solids probably isn't as valuable as going through, you know, whatever questions you have, um, but I'll, I can do at least a couple of problems here on them. Okay. Yeah. Cause I just need, cause I remember last year I knew them pretty well, but I haven't gone over them in a while. So I just need like the, the recap of what each one is and what the equation is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Uh, so what I'm uh, what I'm using is uh, Paul's notes to find some questions. These are these are harder to make up uh, on the fly, but um, we're gonna do uh, a couple of examples here, I guess, uh, of these. I'm just trying to decide which one I want to do. Um, let's do this one. Looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to just snip this one in to the workspace. All right, so this one says determine the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region bounded by y equals x squared minus 2x and y equals x about the line y equals 4. Um, are you allowed to use a graphing calculator or do you have to graph by hand in your class? So it kind of depends on tests. We're not really allowed to use graphing calculators. Okay. But um, Yeah, it, so it, it becomes really important that you can graph something like this quickly. So this this one here, you factor out x and you get x and x minus 2. That means there's zeros at 0 and 2. So when you're graphing this thing, you're like, okay, there's a zero there, there's a zero there, and it opens up, right? So it opens up, and uh, I don't know where it goes. It goes somewhere up there, and then there's a line. Y equals X is like that. Okay. So we need we need to figure out where they intersect. Is that is that okay so far? Yes. Okay. So we'll uh, we'll uh, um, set them equal. Uh, X squared minus two X equals X. And you shouldn't divide by x. I mean, you can, but it's not because because we know that there's one at zero. If you subtract x from both sides, which is the correct thing to do here, you factor x out. You get x minus three equals zero, and you realize okay, there's one at zero, and there's one at three. So I didn't quite graph this right, but there's it, it, let me uh, let me actually edit the graph to make it a little bit more believable. Um, Okay, so they hit there, they, there's that, and then this one comes up like that, okay. So we have, we have this region right here, and we're revolving around the line y equals 4. So from our previous discussion, is this a disk or is it a washer? And what you're looking for is, is there any gap between the region you're rotating and the line that you're rotating it about? Uh, washer. Is a washer, which means we have to figure out. They call it the outer radius and the inner radius. I like I like big R and little R. Doesn't really matter. Uh, so again, what I'm going to recommend you do. This one's more. This one's more sophisticated than when we did. Um, what you're looking for, and I'm going to just use use red. Is like, okay, like um, I've got I've got this line here. And I've also got this curve here. Mm -hmm. What I see is that like if I draw a red radius there it's changing each time do you, do you see that yeah so it's it's kind of a, a top minus bottom thing again like the maximum the radius is is, is down here like like it's it's this four plus this this amount here and I got mm -hmm. four I got four from the, the line there but notice how x is negative down here Mm -hmm. Like the output of the, or the y value is negative. I'm sorry, the y. So it's, it's, it's whatever you get down here. 
So, um, and, and, and because it's negative, you have to add it, which means you end up subtracting it. Hopefully that's not, it's, it's a little bit backwards um, in terms of how you're thinking about it. But the, the, it's almost always top minus bottom. So big R here is four minus whatever value you get from this piece of the curve here. And what, what, which, which of these defines it? Well, it's this first one, this X squared minus two X. Okay. So remember I said you should test that and see if it's like reasonable. Yeah. So if you put zero in for X, if X equals zero, what is, the, what is big R here? Four. Four. We want that because that's 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 this right along here. Okay. Now over here we expect the radius to be one when x is three. So now let's try it for x equals three. You get nine squared minus six. That's three. Four minus three is one. It works. Okay. okay. So we think that that we think that 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 works. Little r. Little r is kind of the same the same deal here. I'm gonna use a different color here. Little r has a radius of four when you start out, but down here it's got a radius of one, but it, it changes linearly along here. So that, that little r, it's four minus this, this line here, which is x. So you can test that at any point, like if x is one, the radius is three and that works, four minus one is three. If x is three, the radius is one, four minus three is one. So that's how I'm coming up with, with little r and big R. That's that's kind of the big deal of doing this. The rest of it is just integrating, which supposedly you're supposed to be an expert expert at by this time in the course. Um, I think it's still fairly challenging as a new calculus student, but they, they are really emphasizing like, do you know how to um, figure out big R and little r here? So uh, big R is four minus parentheses x squared minus two x squared, be very careful here with how you do this parentheses, little r is four minus x squared. And you're integrating from, what are the, what are the limits of integration here? Zero to three. Zero to three, okay. Um, so like at the University of Arizona, they just, they just have you set this up in their, in their homeworks and sometimes their exams, like they don't actually have you go to the trouble of doing it, but they have all these variations on it. Sometimes they don't even have the right limits of integration. They have the correct stuff inside here, but they, you know, go from zero to nine or something and carry on. So would you like me to continue working through this or do you feel like this is adequate for, for this? No, um, this is good. Okay. That works. So would you like, go ahead. I was going to say about the thing. So if it wasn't rotating it around an axis different from from around an axis, like if it was just rotated, I don't even know. So it's always r, big R squared minus little r squared, but when there's an axis introduced, you subtract the equation from the axis. That's, that's okay. So like, like let's do, um, let's do something simpler. Let's say we have a region like this. Um, this is x squared. Mm -hmm. uh, let me, I didn't, let me um, so assume this is this is one and this is y equals x mm -hmm. and now we're going to revolve around the line uh, y equals negative one okay okay um, the everything everything you just said is true when it's when it's above but when it's below my my big r is there and my big r is there and in between it's it's this line uh-huh. So how do I how do I get that with with um, this because it's because the the uh, let me use a different color altogether. Um, so this this red line is really composed of of the the, the height y, but I'm mm -hmm. always adding one to it. Okay, so okay. let me and I, yeah. I'm gonna switch back to black to make this clear. Uh, sometimes, like I, I hate just giving it to you, but that's kind of the only way I can explain this because of the limitations we have here. But it's the this green part is x, mm -hmm. but that that doesn't give you the whole. You're adding one to it. Yeah. But how did I get that? It is top minus bottom because my top is x minus, and what's my bottom? Negative, negative one. one, so it becomes that. Little r here is, um, I think 
this y equals x squared is x squared minus minus one, which becomes x squared plus one. Okay, I see. So the technique I'm showing you drawing the lines, I don't even know if they teach this. This is how I've, I've come around to like being comfortable with these shells and washers and, and things like that when you're, you're trying to figure out, well, what is it? Um, and, and notice we're doing everything, everything with respect to the, the X axis. Uh, mm -hmm. Meaning, like, like these lines, y equals one or, or, or three or negative one. They're 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 all parallel to the x-axis. Yeah. Um, so the discussion changes when we go to the y. Instead of being top minus bottom, it's right minus left. Yeah. And, okay. And it's I wouldn't even I wouldn't even consider going forward until you're like, yeah, I got this. This is good because when you go into why uh, doing integrating with respect to why just for some reason it gets more complicated even though it is exactly the same it just feels different yeah um i think i get it okay did you did you send some more questions to look at so let's see oh i was about to okay. um take take please. 60 seconds and uh, uh i sent them so, okay. yeah, so I sent, what I sent was some problems because I think in the email I included that if we had even more time after we did washers, washers, discs, and shells, that, that we could do um, a couple of problems from, from this lesson that I had. But, okay. yeah, my big problem right now is every test and homework I'm missing my, I'm missing the points on washers, okay. dryers, washers, shells, and discs. So there's, yeah. So it looks like you sent me another another thing here. Um, that what I was what I was trying to get to is is there's um, there's there's really like okay. So there's there's um, some sort of a region, and I'm gonna just go like this, and you can you can go around the x or the y. Like those are two variations of the same problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and it's either. A, a, or you can you can change it up like we showed here. You can do this, mm -hmm. um, and then or you can and this is the this is the like disc disc or the washer method. You can do that, um, or you can take the the same region, and you can do it around the x or the y. But you can use the shell method. Okay. And so like it's it's like we, what you have to realize is that it's you get to the same result it's just they're, they're asking you to do it a certain way they're saying like like one walk this way walk another way you're they're, they're forcing you to do it a certain way and it, it's not always like the best way to do it but that's that's what they require you to do um which which question here did, did you want to uh, look at on this oh, problem so, set 111? so this problem set the questions that i would have that i would have had for that one it would be about um it would be question numbers, I think like 11 and stuff, but that's definitely because, okay, so I need to cover what the equations are for discs, washers, and shells. And then for this lesson, I would have had the question of kind of how, how to do 13 and 15, but not like, I understand the concept of like, you have to take E to the but the part that I'm struggling with is the basic, like when you have to do L'Hopital's rule, I, I don't know how to take the derivatives of some of them, which is just very basic question, but. Okay, so uh, is, is it okay if we transition away from uh, integrals and go to these limit questions that you, that you have yeah. in like question 11 or, or to you? you? Can we really quickly cover what the equation, because I just need to, to see the equations for, um, Disc and okay, and so we, we we've covered uh, we've covered both disc and washer because disc is integral pi r squared. Uh huh. You, or bigger. Yeah, I, I don't know. It it doesn't really matter. Um, it's yeah. it's you've got to you've got to think of it as there's no gap. Yeah. And and sometimes okay. they create problems where you 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 think there's a gap but there's not. They they give you something that looks like this 
and they tell you to revolve it around, uh, well, that's actually a bad example. Um, they give you something like, like this, but it butts up perfectly to this thing that you're revolving it around. Mm -hmm. And then it's, oh, yeah. and then it's still, uh, it's still a disc, even though you might perceive there to be a gap, but if you go here, there is a gap and then it's, and then it's a, it's a washer. Um, I'm going to, uh, so that's pi R squared minus a lower square. Now, uh, for the, for the method, they call it the method of, of, um, cylinders, but it's, it's shells. I think most people go with shells. The, um, the thing that's, that's like, it, it's often, um, I don't want to say this, um, the formula isn't as useful as like realizing that you integrate it one way when it's asking you to revolve it around Y and another way when you're revolving around X. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 um, when you're, when you're asked to revolve around the Y axis or parallel to Y axis, so that's that's an x equals a number type of problem. Uh -huh. The it, it it's an integral in terms of x. It's pi, um, and and the 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 formula is very general, so it's not super useful. But it's pi. Two, I'm sorry, two pi, and then it's 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 it says it says literally the formula is a radius times height, but it's it's x times height. But these are kind of in quotes, air quotes here, um, because x is the x is literally the distance from the y-axis. That that's your x. So let's just say you were supposed to be doing it around the line like x equals five. Mm -hmm. This this whole thing changes. It becomes um, like five minus x because of that whole right minus left that we talked about. I started mentioning. Yeah. Your height is almost always y as a function of x, meaning like whatever y is. So what's what, okay. what the reason I was the reason I wrote this revolve around the y axis, like normally you think, oh no, I have to integrate with y, but if you use the shell method, you integrate with respect to x on these. And your x is it's 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 zero or it's just x if if you're revolving around the y axis. But mm -hmm. if you're if you're revolving around something to the right or to the left, you have to adjust for it here. But the height is always whatever your function is. I don't I don't know if that's helpful. Yeah, that definitely that um, definitely clarifies it. Your it, it says radius and all the all the materials, but that's not particularly useful because um, we can't visualize these things. So mm -hmm. then, so then. Um, you end up doing uh, uh, some other stuff here that's that's like totally unnecessary. But um, what I'm I guess what I'm trying to say is is is, is you de you almost the, they want you to use the method of solids. I'm sorry, the method of shells when you're you're revolving around the y-axis or, or integrating because it they're they're asking you to realize to keep it in terms of of x. The absolute worst case is they want you to use the shell method. To uh, revolve around the x-axis, because you would normally just use the disc or the washer method, mm -hmm. and and here you're here you're integrating with respect to y and it's two pi y in air quotes, and and this time it's x as a function of y, which is really weird because you're not used to seeing that, the dy, and what I mean is is you you you're you're you'll get something like x equals y squared minus y and you know it's 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 around the line of you know y equals two mm -hmm. so this case it becomes this your y is really two minus y and your x of y is y squared minus y dy okay and the reason it's two minus y is because it's 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 above you your your, your two is up here and, and your other function is is down here somewhere, so you're getting that that gap there between them. Okay. It's it's okay. yeah that distance. And there's this. So it, we we there's really four examples to do. There's like there's disc or washer around the x-axis. 
disc or washer around the y-axis, shell method around the y-axis, shell method around the x-axis. And those are the four examples. Then you have offsets from each of those. Okay. okay. I'm so, sorry if that's not clear. It's just, it's, we have to do the examples to make them perfectly clear. Yeah, I mean, I think my biggest confusion was kind of on like what equation is which one and what that applies to and not, I don't know, because I used to understand it. I just needed like a, a good refresher. Yeah. Um, um, so let me, I mean, let me just take a moment here. Uh, have, you, have you visited my website? Um, to, I assume you did the booking, but I'm, I'm not sure. Is that that's Yeah, I did the. Okay. Yeah. Let me just very briefly, this will, won't take more than, uh, more than 30 seconds to do, um, is, um, let me share my screen. Um, you, you came here to book an appointment with me. And I want to make sure you know about what the virtual homework help is because it, it's probably an opportunity for you to get uh, like a quick question answered like you're talking about um, doing one on Wednesday if, you, if you're in the if you change this to your time which is Arizona you're gonna see that it's at four o'clock and like I'll I can just answer a quick shell method question for you and okay. spend some time there so if, if you if you realize, ah, oh, wish I'd covered that example. Just go ahead and uh, um, check that out. It's totally free. Okay. Uh, so you said you had some new questions to look at. Um, L'Hopital's rule. Um, oh, yeah. Let me so, grab those here. Um, so I'm going to grab question 11 to start. So let me make sure that I got question 11. Oh, um, 13. Sorry. Skip 11, go to 13? Yes. Okay. Oh, well, uh, so I, I, uh, I sort of cheat on these. I just graph them. <laughs> Did get the, oh. get the answer. Um, do you ever use, and, and that's what part of, part of me teaching you because you if you're if you're in calculus BC you're already a good math student so let me let me actually do this let me um, uh, change my view to um, to um, have you have you used Desmos before oh I've heard of it okay it's extremely useful um, are you seeing my screen where I uh, am looking at a graphing calculator yes okay so this doesn't, I mean, this is not a substitute for doing the question. I, the, the, that in no way is true. But what it is, what it does allow you to do is to visualize what it is that's going on here. And you can see that, that the limit as X approaches zero from the right, that's what the plus means. It means I'm tracing from the right on the curve. It, the answer is one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we know, we know at least what we're supposed to be looking for. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's, I think, a lot of instructors don't want to emphasize this, but I think it's I think it's super useful to have it. Um, it's, uh, I'll uh, do that differently. So let me get back to sharing um, screen, and we'll talk about how to work through this problem here. So um, first problem is, is this isn't even in the right form, um, and and there's only a couple of indeterminate forms. There's zero over zero. If you remember that from class, indeterminate forms. Mm -hmm. And then do you remember any of the other ones? Uh, infinity times infinity. Yeah, infinity over infinity. Infinity um, times zero. Uh, that, yeah, that might be one. I, I have to double check that. I, but the, the point is, is that th this one doesn't satisfy either of those. So how, what's the only way to get something out of the exponent? Take the log of it. Take the so, log. So you have, you log. have uh, the limit here of tangent x natural log of x and you got to get it so that one of these is is in the right like you need something on the bottom here yeah um, so any ideas about tangent so it's sine over cosine so you mm -hmm. can put ln of x over cosine of x over sine of x you could when you take a derivative though you have to use um, product rule which i'm not super excited about um, here's an alternative, cotangent x on the bottom. It's kind of yeah. nice and, 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 and uh, you know. So the question is, like, like, 
do you get the same problems? And uh, I believe you do. Um, the, like, like we know natural log of zero is infinity, uh, cotangent is also, so we, we actually get an indeterminate form here of in, infinity over infinity mm -hmm. at, at zero. Or, um, so do you think you could have gotten this far? Would you, would you have probably done the, uh, I'll do it over here, the, the limit of, uh, you said, uh, you would go sine ln x, sine x ln x over cosine x. Is that how you probably would have done it? I got I got ln of x over cosine x over sine of x, and I and I took it as okay. cotangent. But I think I it, think that it should yeah. still work. Like this should still work. It's just you're introducing. Like it's easy for me to say because I know what to look for. But what I'm trope, what, what my goal would be is, and explain this to you is, is to always look for something that is, you're trying to make yourself an instructor. Like what is the instructor doing? They, they don't want to do product rule or quotient rule. They yeah. want to do nice, easy, you know, cosecant squared is my derivative <laughs> kind yeah. of thing. Um, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Um, so from here, it's it's a function of taking derivatives until you get something that that evaluates at zero, and then taking the uh, the nat you have to you have to undo it. So you have to go e. So the whole thing is here because we took the ln of both. You're you're really taking e to the limit of this. Mm -hmm. So like like when we do this, and we're going to do it here next. Derivative of ln of x is one over x. This is minus cosecant squared x. So when you take ln of x, you get one over x, which is undefined because it's one over zero. So uh, then, uh, well, no, it, you're actually you you would re, you would you would rewrite this. Um, uh, oh. Like I would I would write it as one over minus x cosecant cosecant squared x. Okay, so you're you're saying it's still un, okay, it's still undefined, right? Is that yes? Okay. So oh, okay. So then, okay. I'm sorry. I just continue. So eventually, I mean, because we know the answer, here's here's what we're eventually going to get to. E, this this whatever this is going to evaluate to e of zero. Just just so you know, kind of know what you're looking for. That's how we mm -hmm. get one. Um, so this actually didn't make it better. So this may not have been what the instructor wanted because it it actually isn't any better. Because um, like you said, at at zero, it's. Um, but I. I actually, yeah. Um, hmm. I'm tempted to go down your road on this one. Because derivative of cosecant doesn't get any better. Um, I need to check a resource here. Uh, Symbol Lab. Do you know about Symbol Lab? No. Symbol Lab um, allows you to. It shows some of these steps for certain problems. Uh, there's just too much to know in this class to be able to do every problem, you mm -hmm. know, out completely. Um, and I'm big on like finding resources that help um, a student, you know, do these questions. Um, I think that we actually start evaluating these things at infinity instead of zero, but I need to confirm that. Um, Symbol lab. There it is. All right, so zero, and we're doing x caret tangent x. That's right. Uh, steps are blocked. Okay. Um, yeah, it doesn't surprise me. So you got to pay for the, uh, the, the version. So um, I believe, let's do it another way here. I don't know how much, how much more time do you want me to spend on this problem? Because it, it's, it's, if, if you, I, I'm pretty sure because these go to infinity, because you take the natural log of zero, um, you're you're not you're no longer taking the limits. It's actually the limit as x approaches infinity here, and that's why it goes to um, 
to oh, zero. Wait. So, I, okay, so this thing that happened was my, my call cut out completely before the teacher taught this lesson. So I tried to learn it from the book, but do you take the limit as x approaches infinity of it? Well, because you're, you're taking the LN of, uh, of it, you're, you're no longer looking at it at zero. So like, mm -hmm. like what, to summarize, let me try to summarize. It's like, it's like, yes, the original problem is the limit as X approaches zero of X tangent X. But when you take the natural log, we know that the natural log of X at zero, it approaches negative infinity. So when you, when you take LN, you're now taking the limit as X approaches negative infinity, E LN, or tangent x, ln x, like this. Oh, like, okay. like th this problem converts to this one. And it, 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 it comes from knowing this. And that's why when you take your derivatives, we can, we can now e limit as x approaches negative infinity, one over x minus cosecant squared x. Now we know that this, this part goes to zero. Um, like you said, one over infinity is zero. The, the X is on the bottom, fine, goes to zero still. And then E to the zero is, is one. Okay. So is that always how you do these problems that once you take it to the, once you take LN, then you go to negative infinity because the limit. Well, it, but okay. It's not, not, okay. Not always because like, let's say, let's, let's say you're looking at a problem where you're taking the limit as X approaches infinity and I, this doesn't work, but let's just, let's just go X to um, the one over X. So when you take the LN of this, it's E limit X to, we're not sure, one over X LN of X. Well, what happens at infinity with LN? Infinity? It goes to infinity. So now, so it's still infinity this time. Okay. Right, so, so yeah, I have one here. You have to sort of like know what it's going to, to make sure that it, it you, you put the right bound there. Okay. That makes sense. Cause I have one here that's limit as X approaches pi over two. So it doesn't apply like that. Yeah. Right? So that, that, that will change also. Um, All right. the, the more important thing though is to graph them is, is cause you, it's like, it's like knowing your destination. You need to know your destination before you try to do it. I know you don't have it on the test, but you're practicing for something bigger than that, the AP. And mm -hmm. uh, you, you, having that is, is much, much more critical. Okay. Um, we might have time for another problem here. Is there one, one more that you like? So, yes, it's not super short, but we don't have to finish it. But um, uh, I can do number 15 from the same lesson. Number five zero or one five? Uh, one five. One five. Okay. Does it make a difference that it's pi over two from the left? No. They're, the reason they're doing that is because it's 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 undefined the other way, so they had they're forced to do that. And oh, okay. you learned you learned really early on in calculus, but may not remember that one sided limits always exist. So that's why this process works because it always exists from one side. Because the function is always defined from one side. Maybe not both sides, but it's defined from one side. Um, all right. Okay. So we got um, the, the, you're going to do essentially the same thing here, which is which is you're going to use ln, the limit uh -huh. as x approaches pi over two. I would encourage you to graph this uh, when we're done. Um, just to just to see it because I actually don't know what this goes goes towards and it's sort of a side point is like this is not extremely useful in any other class like like you never use this in like a physics class or an mm -hmm. engineering class or it's it's this is kind of a pure math thing that we're doing here so um, okay. limit and we got natural log of sine x and I'll just put the uh, tangent x over here um, so before, uh, before we go uh, any further, uh, what? How would you? How would you modify this to start taking derivatives? Um, I would put ln sine of x over cotangent of x. Uh, did you say sine over cosine again? 
or I said ln of sine of x over cotangent of x. Okay, yeah, I mean, I would, I would try that it, 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 because the derivatives will be a little easier there. So mm -hmm. we're looking at um, ln sine x over cotangent x. Your derivatives are one over sine x, mm -hmm. derivative of sine is mm -hmm. cosine x, all over minus cosecant squared x. All right. Um, were you able to get this far when you did it before? Uh, yes. Okay. Oh. Actually, I don't know, because when I took the derivative of ln of x, I did cosine of x over sine of x. Yeah. Right, right. So this becomes, I mean, you could yeah. do it that way. You could do you need cotangent x over cosecant squared x. Oh, okay. So. Hmm. And you're still allowed to manipulate these things. Like you can cancel stuff if you want. Um, I don't know if it helps here, but you know, cotangent is cosine over sine and cosecant is um, one over sine squared. I mean, it doesn't help you here, but, but some problems it does. Um, I need to graph this to see what it, it approaches. Um, this is qu quite a challenging problem um, to be able to do. So we have, we have um, sine x to tangent x. I'm just checking out what it looks like. Oh, uh, pi over two. Good. I got the I got the top cotangent of x would be cosine of x over sine of x. Mm -hmm. So zero over one. So zero. And then over negative cosecant of x. So then it would be one over one negative. So then that would be zero over one, right? So it'd get zero. It, and it, it would, but it, this zero. thing yeah, so that then that's why this thing works because it's 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 still this is the most common mistake, especially with multiple choice. It's e to all this, mm -hmm. so e you get e to the zero, zero so which one. is one, and that is. Yeah. And you'll find that the more you do these, the more like these are the kind of the common answers. You know, zero, one, e, things like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, we are out of time. Um, is okay. uh, I, I, so what I do is I'll I'll get you a link to this. I, I record the uh, the lesson. Um, in case you have questions, I can I can send you a PDF immediately of this if you'd like. Okay, that would work. Um, right. I'm going to send it to the email, the booking email that uh, that uh, I got. So I really appreciate your time, and uh, you know, let me know when you're ready to schedule again. Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good night. Okay.